Our next project in Adobe Photoshop is to create an animal mashup where we're going to take the head of one animal and place it onto the other. And the challenge is to make it look like it's a real animal. We're going to be making use of some different selection tools as well as a mask to make this happen. We'll learn how to use a paintbrush to edit the mask as well as some other tools to uh, copy some different parts of a layer. So let's get started and for this project we're going to use images from the internet. So if I search for my base image which is a pug and come out, come out to the images link in Google because you want high quality images one thing that you can work on is going over to tools and drop down size and choose large. That'll guarantee that the images that you have are larger in size. If this is the image that you want. Click on that image. I recommend always clicking on the image itself. Right click on that image and choose save image as. You can save that image in your computer apps folder or just put it in the downloads folder. So with our image file saved, we're going to open that image in Photoshop. Going to File and New. If I saved it in downloads, I would go over to the left and click on downloads. And I have a pug image that's saved out here and I'm going to start with that image as my base. So opening that image in Photoshop, the next piece for my animal mashup, mashup will be the head. I'm going to turn this pug into uh, a pug that has an owl for a head. So I've already downloaded the great horned owl file and I'm going to go file and this time instead of open I will choose place. Now I have place linked or place embedded. For now I'm going to choose place embedded. Go back to my downloads folder and find my owl. When the owl enters into Photoshop it has handlebars around it with this sort of cross around it asking you to place it where you want it. I'm going to put it somewhere around the head and then simply press enter on my keyboard and I have it as a layer. If I need to scale that image up and down I press control T on my keyboard to get the handlebars back. Make sure you hold down your shift key as you drag a corner to scale it up and down. One thing that will help you line up your head onto your f face is over in the layers panel you'll see that there's an opacity which controls how much of that layer that you see or how transparent it is. At 100% it's completely covering up my pug but if I drag the slider down you'll notice that it's going to fade that away maybe at 70% or 50% I can start to line up and say, well, this is about where I want my head to be and to line up where I want the neck to be. The next step for me is I want to eliminate the outside edge of the aisle. And you'll notice that while we've been using the rectangular and elliptical marquee tool, those tools really aren't going to do much good in selecting my aisle. I need a more specific way to select. And while the lasso tool will allow me to select by clicking and dragging, I'll have a lot more control going back to using my pin tool. Either by pressing P or going down to the pin tool on my toolbar, this pin tool is going to work just like the pin tool in Illustrator. I can create anchor points by clicking or by clicking and dragging to get smooth curves. Control plus will zoom me in so I can see a little bit closer Try and click and drag, there's a click, and go around each of the different elements to create the curves. Outlining the outside of my owl. Here I'm just clicking to get these kind of sharper edges, and then click and drag to get the smooth piece. And come all the way down and click back on my original point to close it and I have a path that's going around the outside. I can even 
use my white arrow pointer, I'm going to select, select my black arrow pointer and fly it out. And each of these points I can, there I'm clicking the whole thing, let's move that back around a little bit. If I click off of my path and then back onto a point, I can edit these individual points. To turn my path into a selection, I press Control and Enter on my keyboard. Now that I have this nice selection, I want to eliminate what's on the outside of what I have selected. I can do that in two ways. I can copy and paste this layer, or if I go to Select and say Inverse, I can press my Delete key to remove that. If you get that error, that means that you have a smart object. Let's right click on our owl layer and we will rasterize that layer, basically meaning that we're turning it into pixels that we can edit. Now by pressing the delete key, you see that my owl has been cut out from that layer. Control D to deselect. I'm starting to line this up and I see, well, it's pretty good, but my pug ears are sort of hanging out. So hiding the owl layer, I will go and eliminate these ears because the background might be pretty solid using the paintbrush might be okay but I'm going to show you a trick that will work on some textured backgrounds as well. Going down to my healing brush and flying it out. Oh I'm sorry we'll go down to we'll go down to the clone stamp tool which is two below the healing brush and if I come out here it says I cannot edit this. Let's click on my background layer. There I can edit. Pressing the right bracket, I'll make my brush a little bit bigger and click. Notice it gives me an error saying that I could not use the clone stamp because I need to select an area using Alt click. So I will select an area over here that I want to copy. Holding down my Alt key and clicking, get a little target there. And now you see the plus sign appearing as I'm clicking with my brush and it's copying where the plus sign is and putting that where my brush tip is. Let's go to the other side. Now I will need to alt click on the right hand side of my ear and I can simply paint that away. Let's see what that looks like when I turn my owl layer back on. Now those ears are gone. That's good. And that'll work for any textured background that you have. Now you'll see that the owl head is very cut out like a like I cut it out with a pair of scissors, it's very sharp and I want to blend that into the dog. So the next step is to put what's called a mask onto the owl and blend it in. With my owl layer selected at the bottom of my layers panel, there's like a rounded box with a circle inside of it. When I click on that, I get this white area added to my layer called a layer mask. The way the layer mask works is I can paint in black and that will remove or hide the area of the layer and if I press X on my keyboard, I will get white, and that will add it back. So I'm going to start painting around the side. Ooh, not with the clone stamp. Let's go with the brush. That's a big brush tip. So pressing the left bracket right next to the P key, I can scale down my brush to the way that I want it. If I turn the opacity down from 100% down to maybe 30%, I can work a little bit of it at a time. And as I click, you can see that I'm now softening hiding parts of that layer and that will allow me to blend my owl layer into my pug layer. Kind of work around the edge here. If I go too far I can press X to take it back to white and add those pieces back. Kind of work into the ne that neck and that's doing pretty good. You can even make a small brush and just kind of work a little bit along the edge to blend that together. Don't, don't forget to save your mashup and give it a, its own special name. That's an interesting way for us to select and to use a mask to blend together. Good luck making your animal mashups. I hope you have fun.